So make sure you've seen the first peacemaking series, which I'm doing uploading on the same day. Uh, and I'm describing an actual Navajo peacemaking session, which I observed directly. I, I observed quite a few peacemaking sessions, but this was one of the very few that was done mostly in English. Uh, I had translators for the others, but it's always better when it's in your own language. So this older woman has had her jaw broken and her arm broken by her son. And the peacemaking is done in a, a very conventional room. And one of the questions that the, um, the person requesting the session is asked, uh, they're asked what their religious affiliation is. And the choice is Christian Native American church or traditional Navajo. And in this case, um, the older woman selected Christianity. And it's not unusual for older people on the Navajo reservation to identify with Christianity. Actually, identification with <clears throat> Navajo and Native American church is more characteristic of younger Navajos. Anyway, that's all besides the point. They're sitting around a table, and the table is not a whole lot different from this table that I'm sitting on, um, except um, it's simpler. And there are several boxes of Kleenex on the table. And the people there are the mother with a broken jaw and arm, her husband, the son, the son's girlfriend who's sitting next to him, and the son's brother uh, and his wife, and the peacemaker and me. And the peacemaking session begins with a a prayer. And the peacemaker said, uh, we are here to bring balance where there is imbalance. Uh, we're here to bring hojo, which is also the name of my YouTube channel, which means harmony, balance, and beauty. And we say that Jesus is in this room with us. And they mean that quite literally, that Jesus is in the room and is watching and listening. And then he, he told a Navajo joke, which uh, everyone laughed, uh, except uh, I didn't really get it. And um, there was definitely a, a cultural thing going on there. And then the peacemaker looked at the mother and said, tell your story. And this is how all peacemaking sessions begin. The person we would call a victim, they would never use that language. They would say the complainant speaks first. And remember that she was instructed to speak of love. And here's what she said, I'm summarizing. First of all, she looked directly at her son. And her son was a, a very tough looking Navajo dude. He had very long hair, he had braids. He looked Hollywood Indian. And um, he looked very tough. And his girlfriend, underneath the table, was trying to hold his hand. And he kept on saying no with his hand, pushing her hand away. And he put his hand up to his face. And his mother would have been over here. So he was avoiding eye contact. But the woman, the mother, looked directly at him. And here's what she said. She said, you are my son. You came from my body. And when you were born, I loved you more than anything in the world. And she said, I sang songs to you. And you remember when you got sick, I would rock you in my arms. And sometimes we'd go to the mesa and we would sing to the moon and I would rock you back and forth, help you get better. And all the time he's like this, my girlfriend's trying to hold his hand. He will avoid eye contact. And she kept on saying, notice I get emotional in the memory. 
that you are my son. And notice, she never mentions the attack. She never says anything about the incident. This is the exact opposite of the justice system, where we can only talk about the incident, we can only talk about the evidence, and we can only accuse for the purpose of punishment. There is no punishment in peacemaking. None. No matter what, there is no punishment. All she spoke about was their connection, her love, and her many memories. She used memory to change the heart. She invoked the memories they shared to transform. The next person to speak, and incidentally, she spoke for nearly an hour in, in that tone, and everyone around the table was crying and weeping, me included. The peacemaker uh, was weeping. And I think the only thing I remember him saying is, you know, when we are young, our parents take care of us. but as they grow old, we need to take care of them. Again, the focus on connection, not on punishment. And then the father spoke, and he stood. And he stood <clears throat> behind his son. And he put his hands on his son's shoulders. And he said, when you were young, I said, this is my son, and he will be proud to be, he will be proud to be a Navajo. And they, they will look up to him. He spoke briefly, and he said that when his son would grow up, they would say, <clears throat> he was better than his father. I hope you can feel this emotion with me, that he would be better than his father. And then his father said, but look where we are now. Look. And again, the father invoked memory, dreams, hopes in a world of imbalance to recreate that balance. Now, in the next video, I'm going to talk about what the brother said. And then finally, what the young man said, because he is the last to speak. And I think you'll be just, if you've been following this, you'll be blown away by how this process ends.